my name is Gillian Kelly and I'm from Outplacement Australia and today we're going to be speaking about applicant tracking systems and how to design your resume so that it works effectively with these technologies. Without a doubt today's hiring process is tough. Recruiters and employers have to sift through hundreds of applications. In fact research shows that employers receive on average 250 applications per advertised role. So as you can imagine, that makes recruiters and employers jobs very, very onerous, particularly if a company is recruiting a lot of positions at one. I know the New South Wales Fire and Rescue Service last year received more than 7,000 applications for 96 roles. So to manage the demands of recruitment and selection processes, most large employers use applicant tracking systems. In fact, whereas once upon a time it was the large organisations that mainly used to use these technologies, now probably more than 50% of mid-sized companies are using them and more and more smaller organisations are taking them up as they become more affordable. What does this mean? Well essentially it means if you are undertaking a job search um, campaign, the likelihood if you're sending your out is that at some point it's going to be put through an applicant tracking system and you want to make sure that your resume is designed effectively to work within these forums. Unfortunately, the downside of applicant tracking systems is that whilst they're great technologies, sometimes computers and people don't speak the same language. And what that means is when people are designing their resumes to be read by an employer or recruiter, sometimes when they're putting that information together, it isn't always also in a format that can be read by the computer and analysed easily within its systems and technologies. So these days resumes really need to be designed for both. They need to be designed for both people and technologies that are reading those documents. And that of course is making the resume development process a lot more complex. So what is ATS software? Well essentially um, it's a technology that helps recruiters and employers to streamline the recruitment and selection process. They do this by um, when your resume comes into the system, it gets scanned, the relevant information gets extracted out of it and put into their um, data banks in, in the different fields. And then that information is then used and assessed against the key criteria for particular roles. So essentially what they're doing is scanning your resume and seeing your relevance to the advertised role and the requirements of that role. And then they rank the resumes based on that relevance and suitability. So you need to make sure, of course, that when you're designing your resume, that your key skills and achievements relevant to the role are coming out effectively and are being able to read, uh, be read by those technologies. The ATS software also some helps um, the recruiters and employers to rule out people that may not meet key requirements. It helps them to manage and sort and communicate with applicants across the different stages of the process. Um, it helps them to track and store relevant application documentation. Um, so yeah, it's quite a good technology, but unfortunately sometimes the issue with the technology is that pe because people don't necessarily understand how it works, their resumes aren't always designed to be effectively read by that software. And that means that good candidates don't get through and good companies lose potentially talented um, uh, employees. In fact, I saw one statistic recently that said ATS kill up to 75% of candidates' chances of landing an interview as soon as they submit their resumes. And I guarantee that that's not because that 75% weren't suitable for that role, but because a large proportion of them didn't understand how the technologies work and so their resumes weren't designed effectively to be read by the um, ATS systems. So how do you avoid this? How do you make sure that your resume is designed effectively both for the people reading your document and also the technologies? The following are a few tips that I would recommend. Firstly, find out as much as you can about their file preference before you send your resume in. So pick up the phone and talk to the employer or the recruiter and ask them how they want your resume submitted. Do they want it in a Word document? Do they want it in a PDF? Do they need it in, in plain text? Um, when you know how they want that file to be um, sent in, then you can design your resume to that. 
If you don't know what their file preference is, probably Word is the safest um, file format because sometimes some systems can't read PDFs, though they do seem to be getting better. Um, sometimes employers will ask for a plain text or a rich text version. What you might want to do if you want to send a PDF is send a PDF and a Word or a plain text alternative so that they have the option of using whichever one is going to be better for their system. But as I say, if you are able in any way to talk to the recruiter or employer about their preference, that's the best thing that you can do. And not only that, it's just good general practice because, you know, it's a whole lot harder for an employer to reject a person than it is a paper. So best to make yourself a person to them, talk with them, engage them, start to build a relationship with them. Okay, once you know what their file format is and you're designing your resume, it's really important that you keep in mind in the IT world, simple is good. Um, glitzy is bad uh, because what these systems are trying to do is they're trying to read and extract your content. Um, and sometimes some of the glitzy things that we do to make our resumes look fancy and impressive can actually interfere with those um, systems being able to read the content. So you want to eliminate anything that can interfere with, with them reading that content. And that might be shading behind your text. It might be fancy fonts that, that the computer doesn't have at their end on, on the system. It might be um, small caps or putting graphics or watermarks behind your text or fancy fonts or expanded fonts or any of those sorts of things. So anything that might make it difficult for the computer to be able to read your content is not a good idea. So ideally what you need to do is probably rethink your use of all those clever things that you've learnt in Word and use to make your document look pretty. Um, I know as a resume writer, certainly um, a lot of people include, you know, visuals these days and graphics. Um, sometimes they'll use um, tables or, or those sorts of things to um, make their document have impact. Um, what you need to do is make sure that you don't use any of those elements for your content. So if you are going to use a graphic or a visual in your document, make sure that it's not going to compromise the system being able to read your content and that it's not in place of any content. It's an, an addition to your content. So you can use a graph in there. Just make sure it's not going to interfere with the system being able to read your content about your history, your qualifications or anything else. Because in these systems, content is king. Uh, essentially, the software is trying to source relevant information um, and assess your ability to meet the employer's needs. And so you need to make this easy for the technology to do. The most important tip that I can give you is make sure when you're running your resume that you are very, very familiar with the requirements of the role and the terminology that they use in their advertisement and any position descriptions because you want to try and reflect this information. Um, keywords are really important for um, ATS systems. So they're searching to try and match the relevance of your skills to the relevant um, skills that the role needs. And so you want to make sure that your resume aligns with those as much as possible. So filter throughout your resume evidence of your ability to use those skills across all your roles um, and reflect the terminology that they're using in the ad. One um, quick little way to, just to see if your resume is reflecting the keywords is maybe to use something like Wordle to have a look at the um, keywords in the ad and compare that to the keywords in your resume. So you may want to scan the job ad and cut and paste it into something like Wordle to see what the big major keywords are that are coming through. So in this instance, administration and management and um, support and data, if they're the keywords in the ad, and when you do the same for your resume, you see that, that those are the same keywords that are coming out in your resume, then you're likely to be a good fit for that role and to be ranked positively by the applicant tracking systems. So that can be a little quick way of having a look to see if your alignment is right. The other thing to keep in mind when designing your resume is you want to make sure that you keep it as standardized as possible. These technologies are designed to look for certain things. So they're trying to source information on your education credentials. It's trying to source information on your employment history. So you want to make sure that your headings and the information within your resume delivers that information the way it would expect it to.
So use standard headings like education, qualifications, employment history or work history. Don't call them fancy things like leadership achievements or um, credentials. Try and keep it to terminology that they um, would relate to. Um, also try and keep your employment um, history consistent across the document. So start each position with the company's name and then the um, dates that you worked with that company and the position title that you were working. So make sure that those are consistently displayed like that throughout your documents so that the um, technologies can source that information quickly and easily. And you also want to make sure that your LinkedIn profile aligns as well because um, social media and in particular LinkedIn is becoming an increasing area of importance for recruiters and employers when they're making selection decisions. So you want to make sure that the resume that you're sending in and your LinkedIn profile are consistent with the information that they are portraying and the dates and your skills and experience. Finally, a word of warning. There are some small things that you can be doing in your resume that may be causing you problems that you weren't aware of. Um, there are particular words that may set off the spam filters on recruiter and employer's emails. So you might want to look out for some of these words uh, that may end up having you be put in the spam box, words like free. You know? um, I would really recommend that you don't try and get clever and trick any of these technologies. It's no good trying to present information in your resume that you're not. So don't try and put any words for skills that you don't have just because they're in the advertisement to get through to interview. Um, I've had people say to me, maybe I should put a whole stack of keywords at the end of the resume um, to try and um, increase my chances. Uh, and I don't recommend that. Use your um, resume as a way to convey your skills and achievements with and do it with integrity um, so if you are a good fit for that role then just make sure that your real skills and achievements are displayed consistently through that document and that should be enough to get you through and ranked highly if you don't have those skills and achievements trying to portray them in your resume when you don't have them will just mean that you'll end up wasting the recruiter and the employer's time and you might end up tarnishing your reputation when you don't want to do that. So the best thing that you can do is just make sure that you design that resume to market your relevant skills and to put your best foot forward. And don't the cover letter because that's often also looked at by these systems and by the employers and it's, it's a ideal opportunity to, to market your um, skills to them. So don't miss that opportunity. So I hope this has been helpful in um, growing your understanding of ATS technologies and some of the things that you might want to keep in mind when you're designing your resume. In summary, you know, content is king. So just make sure that you have a good understanding of the requirements of the role and then make sure to develop content that showcases your capabilities in those areas. Keep your format simple and standardized and make sure that the technologies can read your content easily and avoid any potential technology conflicts. If you do these things, hopefully you'll be able to produce a nice strong document, um, which will be a win for you and a win for the organization. If you have any inquiries, please don't hesitate to email me. You can reach me at info at outplacementaustralia.com.au. Thank you.